In ancient Etruria on the Italian peninsula, the mysterious Etruscan civilization created stunning frescoes, elaborate tombs, and highly detailed metal objects. They practiced equality on a level quite different to contemporary cultures such as the Romans, and they had a knack for divination using the entrails of sacrificed animals. Needless to say, they were a very interesting and remarkable people. Although very little of their domestic dwellings or other buildings have survived, archaeologists have been able to get a lot of information on the Etruscans from the necropolises. But these aren't the only structures they left behind. They went to a tremendous amount of effort to carve winding pathways through huge sections of volcanic tuff, which in many areas left narrow passageways with 30 meter high walls running along their sides. The purpose of these dark labyrinths isn't known with any certainty, but there are lots of clues as to what may have taken place there. Join me as I discuss La Via Cave. Before I get started, I'll touch on two of my favorite research subjects towards the end of the video because I found some connections to this particular topic. So if you don't know much about cyclopean walls and cart ruts, I'd like to invite you to watch my episodes on them afterwards. Both are very ancient mysteries, so if you love that sort of thing, those videos will provide more context to what I'm discussing today without me repeating it all. I'll put links to these videos in the description below. So, back to the labyrinths. In the mountainous Maremma region of Tuscany, where the modern-day towns of Savana, Serrano and Pitigliano sit more than 300 metres above sea level, the Etruscans created an intricate network of pathways hand-cut into the volcanic tuff stone that is characteristic of the area. They are referred to as via cave, meaning quarried roads, or tagliate, meaning cuts. Most of the pathways were carved deep into these layers of solidified ash, creating trenches lined with towering and imposing natural walls of more than several meters, and in some places as much as 30 meters height. Some are as long as half a kilometer, maybe even more. The information on them is quite patchy. The Maremma region of Tuscany isn't the only part of ancient Etruria where they are found, but the ones there are some of the best preserved and supposedly the oldest, although I'm not sure how they are dated exactly. I found references to several others in the Lazio region. In Bomarzo, the Bosco Sacro, or Sacred Grove, is a garden full of fantastical sculptures that was created by a 16th century nobleman, Pierre Francesco Orsini. Whilst this garden is one of the most famous attractions in the area, there are also remains there of much more ancient structures, including an Etruscan pyramid that's more like a stepped altar and was probably used for divination ceremonies. I found references to two quarried pathways near the pyramid, known as the Tagliata di Monte Cassoli and the Tagliata della Rocchetta. Also in Lazio, close to the ancient Etruscan settlement of San Giovanale, is a pathway referred to as the Tagliata della Poggette, and there's another one close to Norquia called the Via Cava Bua. Several of them link up with the later Roman road known as the Via Claudia. The pathways vary in width, with the most narrow fitting only a single person or an animal. Very few would have been able to accommodate a cart. Many are overgrown with vegetation, creating a rather eerie atmosphere, apparently. This is quite clear from photographs, although I haven't visited them myself yet. Experts think that the Etruscans created them by carving holes in the tuff before placing wood and water in these holes. Once the wood expanded due to the effects of the water, it would then break the tuff. By repeating the process, they were able to dig these trenches to the required depth. But although experts have an idea how the pathways were quarried with the tools available in Etruscan times, it's clear that it would still have been a difficult process requiring a lot of people. So whatever role these pathways played, it must have been pretty important to the Etruscans. 
Channels were also included in the pathways to drain excess rainwater, which I can imagine was necessary considering how deep and shaded they are. Some also had steps added in places where they were on slopes. No one knows exactly what these narrow pathways were for. They may have been for defence, since it's not possible to see the surrounding region from inside them, invaders attempting a shortcut through the Via Cave will certainly get lost or trapped. It's also possible they played a defensive role as a place where the Etruscans could hide in times of an attack. Since they link high ground with rivers and the ancient Etruscan settlements that used to be where Savano, Serrano and Pitigliano are now, it's also likely they were carved for convenience so that people and animals could move easily between different villages and resources in what's a very hilly area. However, most of the Via Cave are very curvy, which seems rather impractical if they were designed for convenience. Some experts think that the role the Via Cave played was a ceremonial one, linked to the many necropolises in the area and the Etruscans' belief in the afterlife. These experts think they may have been used for funerary processions, which are thought to have included feasts and dancing based on depictions in the frescoes of Etruscan tombs. Etruscan necropolises in the area include the Tomb of the Winged Demons, the Hildebrand Tomb, and the Tifone Tomb. The pathways were reused as roads by subsequent cultures who also made changes to them. Most of the buildings in the modern day towns of Sovana, Sorano and Pitigliano date to the medieval period. And it was during that time that various shrines and carved crosses were also added to cavities in these pathways, Christianizing the original pagan structures. Some of the pathways and necropolises are part of the archaeological park called La Cita del Tufo in Savannah, and quite a few of them are labelled on Google Maps. That said, there isn't an overwhelming amount of information on them, considering how unique they are. So I'm not sure if the routes are well marked or if there's a GPS signal inside them. Probably not. If I take a trip up there, I guess the visitor centre at the Open Air Archaeological Park will be a good place to start and to get some proper navigation details. But if you do have any other information on them, please put it in the comments below. Because of the parallel drainage channels in some of these pathways, I can obviously see the resemblance to ancient car ruts. But not all of them have drainage channels and some of them have singular ones, so I hesitate to make a connection. Although those of you who regularly follow my channel know, that I did also find cart ruts similar to the Maltese and Sardinian ones at the Etruscan necropolis of Banditaccia in Lazio. And these seem to be connected to some sort of depressions encircling a tumulus. These depressions look as though they were for drainage, so perhaps that's all these cart ruts were for. The more ancient cart ruts in Malta and elsewhere don't appear to have been for drainage though, so I doubt there's a relationship between them. That said, Wherever I see connections, I'm going to mention them, however speculative they may be and however unrelated in time and geography they are, because they're just speculations of mine. Do not mix them with the facts, which, as you know, I take mostly from peer-reviewed articles and books written by academics. Also, whilst I am speculating, the towns of Savana, Serrano and Pitigliano are about 20 kilometres from Saturnia. Now a famous spa town, it's said to have been founded by the Romans. However, ancient writers also alluded to it having started out as an Etruscan settlement, who, as I've mentioned before, these same ancient writers refer to as descendants of the Pelasgians, pre-Greek Aegean people. I've already discussed how archaeologists and scientists think that the Etruscans weren't actually from the Aegean, so I won't go into that again. But what's interesting about Saturnia is it apparently has plenty of remains of Cyclopean walls, megalithic constructions attributed to the Romans, but which many researchers think are probably much older. So that's just another interesting observation I wanted to make. Returning to the Etruscan labyrinths, I think something ceremonial was going on there, something linked to nature gods and the interesting volcanic geology of the areas where the Etruscans lived. The experts are quite certain that the Etruscans were descended from the local Iron Age Villanovans, but as you can see from my videos, the Etruscans had aspects of their culture that were pretty unique and didn't seem to evolve from that which went before, so I find that really 
fascinating. Over the past week, I've also read some other intriguing articles on megaliths at Etruscan sites. I'm talking menhirs and stone circles, but I'm not sure how accurate this information is, so I want to find some proper research before I go into that. I'll let you know what I find as usual. So until next time, thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I'm uploading my next video.